that helped you settle into the team? Yeah, the, the atmosphere in our team is very yeah. friendly, you know. I think Scousers in general are very friendly people. So. Yeah, like um, the Irish in it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, no, but like, yeah, having each other and then having a team of very friendly people. You know, at the time we lived with Fern Whelan, who um, has lived here all her life. So she obviously knew the ropes and was very, very good to us. Yeah. and showed, showed us around, yeah, exactly. showed us where to go and places to hang yeah. out and stuff. And it was the time when, you know, Jill Scott and Tony and Rachel Brown are at the club, so some awesome players and awesome people who, you know, it's hard not to feel comfortable in a group of players like that, so, yeah. yeah. And then I'm assuming it just started being like that. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, was, I wasn't here for very long, unfortunately. <laughs> I, I was off to America for university about nine months later, but Simone's obviously made this her, her home um, for, for quite a while Yeah, now. so I... We stayed like in, in Liverpool for the first couple of months and then Lizzie went off to Harvard and I went off to Edge Hill. <laughs> <laughs> She's got a master's there. <laughs> you had to go to Harvard, didn't you? Of all the places in the world, <laughs> Harvard. I um, so I went to Edge Hill, which is just outside Liverpool. So I moved up there. So it's just outside Liverpool, but obviously then got to know people and I've really settled now in, in Liverpool. Um, so I've literally only just recently finished up doing my masters. <laughs> we should have a little count in the corner of how many times she says that. Um, obviously, I know you're joking about your masters, but it's a, a fantastic achievement considering you know you're becoming a, a full-time professional. But just tell me about the the areas that you've both studied and, and, and where the thinking was behind where that's going to take you. Okay, well, a bit different to be yeah, honest, so I'll go first. Um, so I did an undergrad um, degree in sports coaching and towards my final year, I kind of looked more specifically at like, um, basically with being a professional myself, I kind of looked into the effects of receiving video analysis feedback and how as an athlete I perceive it and how coaches are delivering it. So more in towards the coach education to help better educate coaches. Um, so from my undergrad, I did a paper on that, which got published. And then, and then we kind of seen potential to kind of further that research. So that's what led me into doing my master's. Um, so instead of looking um, just at how players were receiving it, I kind of went in and looked at how coaches were delivering it on a wider spectrum of athletes. Um, so I've just recently finished that. So that paper is hopefully going to get published as well. So um, the aim kind of of my research was to kind of get stuff out there that coaches can kind of lift it up and be like, oh, I never thought of it this way. Maybe it can help me think of how I can deliver my sessions to athletes because this is how they're perceiving it. So that was kind of like the, the path I kind of chose. I really enjoyed it, to be fair. Uh, just a quick one for you, Si. Does uh, seeing your work published, how does that match up to scoring the winner in a game? To be honest, I was really proud of getting a published paper. It's something I never thought I would ever achieve. Because um, obviously my whole life's been football, football, football. Um, whereas kind of like the academic side of my life is just not something I... Like, I mean, I, I was always getting good grades and stuff in school. But whenever I went to university, I really enjoyed my degree and I enjoyed the work. And I found it just... I, I don't know, I just really enjoyed doing it. Um, so then when I went in and they said that they wanted to kind of publish my paper, I was like, whoa. I just never imagined that, you know, I'd ever do something like that. So I was really, really proud of it. I mean, I printed out that published paper and framed it <laughs> <laughs> I was like this is going on my wall I, I was I was so proud of that one to be fair uh, and Lizzie yours is chalk and cheese to that <laughs> <laughs> uh, here we go I don't have a master's to be fair um no I so yeah I went off to America I went to Harvard and I studied economics um didn't think I would study economics went in with the idea of actually going to medical school one day and so I started a biology type degree um, and then switched up and realised I really enjoyed economics and I didn't have done a finance internship since then in London and really enjoy that sort of atmosphere, very fast paced, very interesting work. So, um, you know, I think for me down the line that might be something I continue with. Um, but, you know, I've, I've, I just really enjoyed studying a wide variety of behavioural economics all the way through to finance so yeah, that was my thing a little bit different. Very though. similar. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. I'll be 220.
Is this a very obvious deliberate attempt to compare and contrast words? That's that is literally like the perfect one. That's this is one prepared I prepared earlier. <laughs> I would imagine being able to go over to Harvard, settling to life in there and enjoying it, because I know we've had a conversation where you, you loved it out there, would have made it quite easier to then come back here and, and resettle back into Liverpool. Yeah, it, it helped, and then in the same time, you know, every time I move somewhere, when I first moved to Harvard, it was really hard. When I first came back, it was really hard because you sort of learn to love a place and then, yeah, sort of ripped away from it. Um, but, yeah, you know, I've, like you said, I've moved a few times now, so I, I kind of know that there's a bit of a, a moving adjustment period and then you, you really start to love it. So it's, it's nice to have that experience to have lived in a few different countries now. And the fact that you're ongoing, the fact that you've carried on your studies would suggest that perhaps both of you have already got one eye on, on when the professional football yeah. finishes. I'd say on a serious note, like the reality is we, we have to. Um, being, you know, as far as the, the women's game has come, which is great. You know, we say 10 years ago, we didn't know whether we could even be professional footballers. And now there is that path for girls. But the reality is, you know, we don't know how long we'll be able to viably pay, play for. And any athlete, you, you never know when you could get injured and have to stop playing. So, but for me personally, you know, I definitely see myself having sort of a two stage career, you know, doing my football and then <laughs> using my degree to, to do something else. So. I've definitely got that in the in the pipeline somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, and I've thought about maybe doing a PhD or something when I finish. Then I'll be Dr. McGill. Imagine. <laughs> <laughs> she would demand that we call her yeah. Dr. McGill as well. There'd be no more Simone. I don't know. It's just a I mean, I've also thought about opening a coffee shop. I mean, I love coffee, and like where I live at the minute, there's no like kind of speciality coffee shops. So that I know it's a disaster. Yeah. Um, so I've thought, oh, there's the gap, you know, get in, have my own coffee shop. No idea what I would call it yet. I mean, I've had a few ideas, but I know what I kind of want. Like, I went into a coffee shop the other day that had swings as seats. I was like, I'm definitely having that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and dogs allowed. You bring a pug in, you get a free coffee, you know, little things like that. Um, but yeah, I'd Do love Do you have a dog? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's going to be a little picture of Chester in the corner. Yeah. This, this <laughs> now that you're... I'll just put that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what oh, Liz. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting too excited. <laughs> Obviously, when you're part-time players, yes, young girls are going to look at you and go, I want to play uh, football forever. But now that you're professionals, do you feel like almost that pressure's intensified, that, that the women's game has come that far, that now it is a very real dream for young girls to make a living out of playing football? I think, like, I think it's fantastic for young girls to be able to look and see that there are people out there that are playing football full time now. I mean, when we were kids, we didn't have that. And uh, I mean, growing up, our role models were always male footballers, whereas for young kids now, they can look, look and see female footballers. And I just think, you know, it's fantastic that, yeah. that they can do that now. And it says how far the game's come. Um, and the fact that we could potentially be role models for young kids is, you know, yeah. I think it's great. Yeah, for us, it was, it was such a, like a stigmatized or an out of the ordinary thing for girls to go and play football. And, you know, you were doing something very different to what your cohort of girls were doing. Whereas now it's, it's, it's a pretty, you know, normal thing. You know, girls can play football and that's, that's great. And they can you know, see there's an obvious pathway for them to continue playing football if they want to and that it's, it's, it's absolutely fine to choose to do that instead of, you know, going off and doing other things that maybe you might feel pressured that you should be doing. So, you know, it's, it's great to, we're really lucky to have been born when we were and have <laughs> this opportunity to, to, to do what we do now, so, yeah. You've obviously been part of different squads, uh, international squads, different Everton squads, and they've always been made up different kinds of people, which just shows that if you really want to be a footballer, you can do it. Yeah, anyone. Any, obviously, you, yeah, know, I mean, you need to be able to kick a ball, but well, anyone yeah. really can do it. Um, we, we know very different people yeah, and from all walks yeah, of life. So. Different characters, everything. I mean, if, if it's something that you want bad enough, 
you know, going back to the choices that we had to make, if you make the right choices and you're really driven and you work hard every day, then why can't it be you too? Do you know what I mean?